Hello. What is up, guys? Happy Friday. Happy Friday, and welcome back to part three of Relational Intelligence three-part masterclass. Oh yeah, three-part masterclass. Way more concise. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, today we're talking about sex, baby. Mm. We're talking about mm. you and me. Mm. We're talking about all, all the good things, things and the bad things. Bad things. Bad things. Bad things. Well, we really dragged that Let's out. Let's talk about sex. So, guys, Just we're talking about sex about. today. What's up? Folks that are jumping on, um, we are super excited today because... Raise your hand if you like sex. Raise your hand if you're a fan of sex. Just comment below me. If, you, if you're scared to own that you like sex, we probably have another conversation to have. So We're big fans of sex. Anyways, if you're watching, comment below. Guys, we're here today to talk about sex. And we're going to start with a super yummy story. Ooh, yummy. Yeah. I hate that word. Yeah. Um, okay, so in one of the rounds of relational intelligence that we had a couple going through who had been married for lots of years, I don't remember the exact number, but like five or ten. many years, and years. after we did the Supercharged Sex Life module, we actually received a photo of a torn shirt uh, with Legitimately. a Legitimately. With a message that said, well, this hasn't happened in a really long time. And it a made... A torn shirt, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and it's... Like, oh, we're doing it. The, like, it was... The person felt a little bit sheepish and was like, sorry for if this is too much. And we were like, no, we're so excited. Because here's the deal. A lot of times, the longer you've been together, and this is a story that's prevalent in society, that the spark fades or the passion dies or your chemistry just doesn't exist anymore. And we are here today to say that is total bullshit. And we're going to tell you exactly why oh. and what you can do to create a brand new story for yourself of a sex life that is supercharged and that stays supercharged. Absolutely. So the last couple days we've gone through conflict. Conflict resolution code. Codependence breakthrough. Codependence breakthrough. That's what it was. And codependence breakthrough. And then today, which is probably like the sweet sauce on top. It, that sounds kind of gross actually. But it is. It's like the secret sauce to uh, to having like it's weird to say a super awesome relationship. And, yeah. and here is what it is, guys. Should we just dive right in with it? I think we should dive. Guys, here's the thing. We got enough of you watching, so let's go ahead and do this. And go ahead and share this and comment on this um, with somebody who you want to have more sex with or, <laughs> or friends that you know want to have more sex. So here it is. When you dim the tension in your relationship, you also dim the passion. I think the word was dull. Dull. When you dull out the tension, you dull out... The passion. the passion. And it just makes a whole lot of sense. So if you are constantly trying to like check in with your partner and you're like hoping to not like stir the waters ever, that does not create super sexy vibes, right? Like if you're doing everything to try to accommodate your partner, chances are you're not creating sexy time yeah. to the degree that you could be creating sexy time. Absolutely. And so this really is something that most people don't see because here's what happens. Here's why the spark fades over time because spark the fades. longer you're seven year itch, the longer you're together, the more you gravitate towards comfort and the less you want to experience insecurity in your relationship or instability. Or instability. Feel like instability. And so the pieces of you that can bring up triggers for your partner or the pieces of them that bring up triggers for you start to get dulled more and more, right? There start to be times where you're like, you're like, oh no, I know where that conversation is going to go. And so instead of having it, you just subvert to the side and you do that long enough and you look up and you wonder where did our spark go? And I'll tell you where your spark went. Your spark went right out the door with all the tension that you've avoided. Yeah. Here's the thing is like the longer that you're together with your partner and actually I think you taught me this. Hmm. And we talk about this a lot in our course and the relational intelligence course is that when you have been together for longer, it feels like there's more and more and more to hold up, right? It's like in our relationship, it's like we have to hold up this thing, this yeah. image of what we are and um, even like like externally, but also internally, like what we think mm -hmm. the image that, that we present as a relationship is. And so we're constantly trying to hold it up without letting it fall. And so... 
if you spend so much time trying to hold it up, it's also, again, it's not going to create sexy. It's going to push you. Whereas, yeah, if you allow it to just be on the ground room floor and you're like sussing it out as things are happening and you're having the conversations, even having the conflict, because it's normal to have conflict, that it's going to get sexy. Like that makes and breeds more sexy. Yeah. And I think the reason that is too is because we start really being ourselves. Yeah. and. That's sexy. Like when you be yourself, that's a really sexy trait. Mm -hmm. Like if you own that, it's like, no, hell no. We're not going to bird's eye restaurant tonight. We're going to Chuck E. Cheese, like whatever. <laughs> it's like if you're owning whatever it is that you want, that's really attractive, right? So having the tension keeps the passion going. Absolutely. And sometimes at, at first, you know, it doesn't mean if you just like, this is my desire, and this is why we teach these things much more. It's probably things that you're already doing just in the underneath it, and it actually ends up creating more disconnection. And so the truth is, like Matthew said, when you have space to own what's real for you, there's more room for passion to exist. And what I want to share is actually a pretty out there story from Matthew and I's relationship. So we have been practicing this. I don't know. We didn't share this this time. Guys, I'm nervous. I have no idea what she's going to say. It's, it's, Nathaniel it's, Salas. The first uh, year of our relationship, I worked maybe 10 hours a month in my business. Matthew worked maybe 20, 30 hours a month. Basically, we worked very little in our businesses, and we spent all of our time geeking out about our relationship. So we put in lots of hours, lots of hours, you guys, for these conversations to go the way that they do and also to uncover the tools that we have so that we can share them with you. Because let's be honest, not everybody has, you know, 80 hours a month just to work on their relationship dynamics. Or sexy time. So what I was going to say is what we realized is the more we avoid and resist something that doesn't feel good in the relationship, the more we're actually pushing away the passion as well. And so... <laughs> We're super honest with each other. And again, I want to caveat Y'all, yeah, we're real honest. Don't practice this at home unless you've gone through relational intelligence. Absolutely. We literally tell each other when we are unattractive. Are you are seriously about to steal my punchline? Oh, no. I okay. set that whole thing up. <laughs> you set up the punchline. Babe, you can hit it. Hit the punchline. I do that to him all the time. So, yeah, all yes, the time. We're very, very honest with you. Down to the point that even when we're not feeling attracted to each other, we'll share that. Like, hey, I've just been noticing I don't feel that attracted to you or drawn to you in the past week. Again, disclaimer, don't do this at home. I'm going to explain why it works for us. Because we understand that it's about us. Now, I understand that if I'm not feeling attracted to Matthew, it's 90% because of something that's going on in me. Either I haven't expressed a feeling that I've been feeling towards him, or there's been like something that I feel like I have to hide from him. There's all sorts of things going on underneath the surface. So if you go through periods where the, the sex just, the, the drive isn't there, the hunger for each other isn't there, don't cop out by saying that you just don't have chemistry anymore, or this is just a dry spell, or oh, Oof. I don't have time for sex. That's not true. When you really want sex, you make time powerful reminder as, a, as like a red flag going up in your relationship, like hey, there's stuff you guys need to address. Okay, so if your passion isn't flowing, that means that there's part of your conversation that isn't flowing. It means your emotional connection isn't, there's a lot not flowing. And the sexual connection is just an indicator of that. So if you will take Ooh. a deeper dive and lean into the tension that you've been avoiding, you will reclaim the passion that you've been missing. Yes, absolutely. So sex is really, it's, man, this is going to probably crush a lot of your hearts. Sex is a symptom of what? other things that are going on or not going on in the relationship. So if you're having rockin' sex and you've been together for more than eight months, more than the honeymoon phase, if you're having rockin' sex, like chances are, if you're both fully expressed, then you're having a great relationship. Like chances are because mm -hmm. all the rest of your relationship's probably flowing really well. You're probably really connected. And if it's like not working, there's probably...
probably lots of ways where you aren't fully being honest with yourself or with your partner. Well, and I think it's really all connected because some people just like the circle. It's possible of life. to just shut off and have really shallow Boom. sex and just like keep going. And so yeah. that's really what this is about, and that's what the Never Ending Honeymoon is about: is having all facets of your relationship running on all cylinders and it's so possible you guys it's not a fairy tale one of our favorite quotes we put it on the the um what is it called for the reception at the wedding when someone gets the itinerary for the wedding you know what i'm talking about yeah on the flyers that you get when you go to events we put on the back of it one of our favorite quotes which is um, fairy tales were never something for you to find. It's always been something for you to create. And when you have the right tools and you have the right mechanics, it is a hundred percent possible and plausible that you're going to create the kind of relationship you have always wanted. Even if you've been married Absolutely. for 20 years and it feels impossible, it's possible. Even if you think your partner's never going to join you, if you learn these things and you do the work on yourself, it is a hundred percent possible for you to have the kind of love that you desire to experience. So, guys, here's the dealio. Just gonna lay it out there, super simple for us. We, for Valentine's Day, wanted to do something super, super sweet. So guys, we are offering up for basically like what, the next week, maybe the next two weeks? We're gonna be offering our course at a drastically, drastically reduced price because it's Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And we want you to learn the mechanics of relational intelligence. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this stuff was really helpful. Go ahead, please do share the heck out of this. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, like we would really, we want people to experience this work and we want you to like really get results in your relationship, not just like little freebies here and there, which those are great too, yeah. but they're just a start. So. Yeah. so if you've been listening to this and you're like, ah, oh, that sounds great, but I don't know if that'll work for me or any other thing that's pinging or going off and you reach out to us so that we can have a conversation and really figure out what is going to be the right step for you to take to have the kind of relationship that your heart has always desired. Because again, we are here to be a stand for epic love and not just a stand for epic love, but also to give you the bridge to creating it for yourself because we're not lucky, okay? That's not why we have this kind of love. And if you make us lucky, then you're letting yourself off the hook. What we are is practiced and devoted and you can be that too. So shoot us a message if you feel like epically increasing your love this season and thank you for joining us like Matthew said tag friends that you think would love this share this video help us literally spread the love so that the world yeah. can be a more peaceful more beautiful more loving place so be to be crystal clear if you are interested in doing the relational intelligence course it's six weeks it's freaking awesome go ahead and shoot Amanda or myself a direct message mm -hmm. and we will hook you up we're super excited and with that happy Friday happy weekend and so much love to you guys we love you I'll talk to you Mwah. soon I do that every time <laughs> guys you're just getting time. a little bit of extra love from us why does it make it so hard?